do 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 that. Mr. Theorist here, and welcome back. I'm back, kind of, not really, but I'm currently having to isolate because of COVID. Um, I don't have COVID. Um, it's just the NHS app that uh, Britain uses. If you're a non-British watcher, um, it's what we use when we're tracking uh, people who come in contact, people who've been tested positive. So I've had to isolate for the past couple of days. Uh, so I've got some more days to go, so I might get some more videos done. We'll have to see. Um, but yes, anyway, this video, um, as you can tell by the thumbnail and uh, the title of the video, I have no idea what I'm calling them yet. Um, I am going to be predicting, which is my honest prediction, of where I think Phase 5 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to come from. I know that Phase 4 is the next one, that is why I'm predicting Phase 5. This is based off what movies are coming out in Phase 4 and where we're currently at in the MCU. So this is kind of me predicting where I think Marvel will go and like a sensible choice for them going forward. So, what do I think is going to happen? Um, well, if we take into account everything that we know is going to be happening in the MCU so far and what we're pretty sure of was also happening, um, I'll listen more often and then I'll talk about the theory itself. Okay, so we know that in Phase 4 we're going to be having uh, WandaVision, which is the Disney Plus exclusive show following uh, Wanda Romanoff? No, that Romanoff's Black Widow's name. I can't remember her last name, but uh, Scarlet Witch. Um, and she creates mini pocket universes um, for, so her and Vision can kind of live together. We don't know whether it's actually Vision, whether it's just going to be like a, a memory version of Vision. We're not quite sure, but it looks like we're going to get a... a higher understanding of her powers um, and she's going to be creating little pocket universes where her and Vision can live together um, in different areas of time. So that's the first one. Second one is we know we're going to be getting um, Doctor Strange 2 and uh, Multiverse of Madness. Um, we were going to get Black Panther 2 but we're not quite sure about that um, but the other important one is going forward is we're going to get Spider-Man 3 and the heavy rumours to do with it is that we're going to basically be getting a live action version of the Spider-Verse. Uh, Spider-Verse was the cartoon anime um, movie that Sony did following Miles Morales as he enters into another universe and meets other Spider-Man. And it looks like we're going to get a live action version kind of of that, but it's going to be following our Peter Parker um, from the MCU. And he's going to be meeting uh, the Garfield um, Spider-Man, which is the amazing Spider-Man Spider-Man, and also the original Spider-Man. Um, that was in the early 2000s and um, that had the f the three Spider-Man films that ended with Venom um, in the third one. Uh, Venom might be, we don't know yet. Um, I have done a theory on Spider-Man and Venom getting together, uh, meeting together in a film but that's a different video. Um, but those are the three main things we know are going to be happening for Phase 4. is Spider-Man 3, because Spider-Man is kind of a flagship now for the MCU and if the rumours are heavily true, and it seems like they are, um, we're going to get uh, multiple versions of Spider-Man in a different universe, or different universes. Um, Doctor Strange 2, which is Multiverse of Madness, and WandaVision, where she's going to be delving into multiple universes as well. There's a theme running around here. Um, we also know that eventually the X-Men are going to be joining the MCU, along with Deadpool, and also the Fantastic Four. Now, the Fantastic Four element kind of can be merged into with my theory, but it doesn't necessarily have to, because their origin isn't dictated by stuff we already know. Um, for example, with X-Men, um, in order for you to fully like get the X-Men story, um, it goes all the way back to World War II and the mutants will have to be an established thing, um, I feel. Uh, and to then suddenly retcon that, oh yeah, mutants have already existed, it wouldn't quite work. Um, especially with the fact that you kind of need Magneto to be um, a Jewish child who was put in concentration camps by the Nazis. It's kind of, it's part of his character persona. Um, so yeah. So anyway, they're the main things we know about what's going to be happening in the MCU. Now my theory is delving onto Phase 5. Some of you are probably already getting where I'm going to be going at here. But basically, I think for Phase 5, we are going to be starting our Phase 5 because phase, I feel that Phase 4 is going to end with our key characters, Strange, Spider-Man, Wanda, maybe Vision as well if he survives the, uh, if he comes back because of Wanda Vision, um, and maybe a couple of other hero heroes. They are going to end up in an alternative universe of the MCU, essentially, um, an alternative Earth. Um, and it, on this alternative Earth, we are going to be having the X-Men, or the mutant societies, already be an established thing. And all of Phase 5, we're going to be stuck on this alternative Earth. Um, and on this alternative Earth, Spider-Man is not known to be Peter Parker. 
um, because that way we can kind of wreck on what happened in um, Far From Home where Spider-Man was outed. Um, so yeah, like I feel that if you're going to have Spider-Man fully outed constantly now, it's, it's not going to help with his persona because he is meant to be a teenager hiding in school, uh, fighting crime. He's not really meant, he's not one of the heroes that he's really outed there. Um, obviously the Avengers are, but many of the other heroes, you're not really meant to know who they are, like, unless Marvel just does that now. But anyway, that's a minor element of it. Um, but I feel if we have this alternative Earth, then we can have um, the X-Men be an established thing. Um, it also means that on this alternative Earth, uh, the Fantastic Four could, as I say, it doesn't necessarily have to because their origin can happen at any point, um, but they can also be from this alternative Earth. And also, if you have the X-Men on this Earth, we know that Deadpool is part of the X-Men universe where it, it's loose and they make jokes about the fact but he is meant to be part of that established X-Men universe. Um, it also means on this alternate Earth, we can have some of the actors who currently play the X-Men be the X-Men, but if you establish he's a different Earth, it doesn't necessarily have to be the Earth where the X-Men come from, but it's also not our Earth that the MCU is part of. Um, and I feel that you can have all of these films, because then you can have uh, a couple of X-Men films based on the MCU, but it's those alternative MCU, where we can have some of our MCU actors dip in and out, like they have done, where we're seeing more frequently now, where MCU actors are in their own solo movies, but they're slowly kind of like going, oh, he's from that film, and he's from that film, let's stick them together in this sequel to this character's film. Um, it also means we can delve into completely new characters and if they've already got established histories in the MC, uh, MCU but it doesn't line up with anything we've learnt so far in the MCU, kind of like when they introduced Captain Marvel where it was like, yeah, she's existed since the 90s, then why didn't she come and help the Avengers when Earth was being invaded? Yeah, you can say the thing of, oh, but she wasn't really needed. Uh, Fury didn't think about it. Well, Fury, when they're building the Avengers team, surely he would have grabbed Captain Marvel. So you can avoid some of these canon issues by having a whole phase based on an alternative Earth. And it also means that phase four, if people are wanting it to happen, we could have the scroll stuff happen um, instead of it being a bigger lead up, if that's what they're going to do for the big thing of phase four. Um, so you don't have to then lay down the groundwork for the X-Men of phase four because you've got all these other films lined up. Um, and then phase four will end with I would assume, if we're going to do it, maybe Madam Web will appear, hence why they're making a big thing for Spider-Man having his own multiverse thing, um, where she's going to go, look, you're all needed somewhere else, and we'll grab them and put them on this new Earth on Phase 5, or it might not even be Madam Web, because the bigger thing they could do here is they could do Secret Wars, which is like a whole bunch of heroes from everywhere were all thrown onto this one planet, and it would have to scrap it out. And then you can have Secret Wars be the end of Phase 5, but then Phase 5 will end with every surviving hero from that big massive conflict has to go to the one, uh, one safe place on Earth, which would be our MCU. Um, it means that we've had a whole phase where some characters have made new friendships, um, that you feel there's new teams that are formed, characters have got to know each other, you could possibly resurrect some dead characters that already existed, because maybe Vision won't come back in WandaVision, but it means that you could have Vision come back, if WandaVision was so popular that it's like, oh, we need to keep these guys as a couple, you can have Vision come from this alternative Earth and have WandaVision relationships happen in the MCU cinematic universe. Because then you can have all sorts. You can, like, Venom can now be in the MCU if Sony and Marvel decide that it's a thing they could do. So Eddie Brock could be uh, Agent Venom instead of the other guy who's Agent Venom. Um, so basically it means that if Sony wanted to, Sony and Marvel can use this excuse to basically bring all their Spider-Man stuff into the MCU without going, okay, well, well haven't we heard them before? Because they were on an alternative Earth, but they now exist in ours. It's a really fun way to retcon certain things that you feel fans might be like, well, how are you introducing them and that and that when there's been no setup for it? Because we've got a whole phase based on alternative Earth that helps establish these characters as having different origins and then you bring them into a new Earth where it's almost similar apart from the fact that the um, mutants would exist on this alternative Earth and it might mean that maybe Captain America might survive if Chris Evans for any particular reason wanted to come back to the MCU or maybe Robert, uh, 
Thanos didn't invade because the X-Men exist on this Earth and it's well protected by the most, with some really powerful mutants, Thanos never came to Earth at that point. So Earth wasn't unsafe because um, Strange became the, mas uh, the master of the mystic arts for a different reason, or maybe he's not even the master of the mystic arts on the alternative Earth and Strange you know, whatever. It means that basically we can have whatever we want to happen without worrying about canonised retcon issues that the fan base will clearly jump on because we know the fan base, we are willing to jump on any canon problems that exist in the MCU. Um, and it also means that Marvel can kind of compete with what the DC is doing by having it like, hey look, DC is clearly doing their own thing now. They're not having one established universe. They're doing the multiverse, which DC is more known for, for the multiverse, because it's how they have the big crisis events that always kind of rejig and restart origin stories. Where Marvel has multiple universes, um, this kind of exist. Uh, it's not quite as extreme as what DC does, but it means that they can kind of do that, and it's like, hey, look, we can kind of see where DC is do doing, but instead of DC keeping it as a multiverse, Marvel will then go, okay, now we've done this and we've established different origins, we can now bring them in on this one prime MC Earth. We can have a whole bunch of different random shenanigans happen. Magneto can be a big threat in a future storyline without us worrying about why hasn't his um, mutant, why hasn't the Brotherhood turned up before to cause problems because it turned to Earth. And it just, it just means we can have a totally different like cast of characters without worrying about canon retcon problems. But anyway guys, that is my idea for what I think Phase 5 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe will go to. I definitely don't think this is going to be a Phase 4 thing, I think it'll be Phase 5 because you'll need a whole phase to kind of help you properly establish characters and everything and having it all based on alternative Earth with some of our characters from the current MCU who are then going to have problems in multiverses who will then be like, okay, so we understand what multiverses are, so when they get thrown onto this alternative Earth they will kind of have an understanding and we will have an understanding because we've just had a few, we've had two films and a Disney Plus TV series that has established what multiverses are so we kind of got used to that but when they have a whole phase based on this, uh, based on this alternative Earth. And that guys is my theory, Phase 5, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I hope you guys have enjoyed, if you have please like this video. Um, if you think I'm on kind of the right track, or maybe you have your own predictions for where, what the big threat for Phase 4 might be, um, or maybe you think they might not have a big threat for, threat for Phase 4, and they might be having like another three phases leading into a big threat, maybe that'll happen. Um, but yeah guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, it does help us so much. Until next video guys, I will catch you later. Bye!